Hallelujah to you, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over this live. This is the third time. We plead the blood of Jesus over this live. We come against all demonic distractions and connectivity issues in Jesus' name. I'm going to get right to this word because I see that there is a ton of warfare over this word. I plead the blood of Jesus over this live in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus over this live. I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm going to get right to this word. Once I get the number to 100, I'm going to get... I'm get right to it because i see that this is weird this don't ever happen to me when i go live this does not happen at all you know it's interesting too before i got on here god was telling me to outfit myself with the arm of god god was telling me to outfit myself with the arm of god now i see why he was telling me no it doesn't it never happens it's very interesting you know why because the enemy is after the kids once I get the number to 100, I'm going to start um, giving you all what thus saith the Lord, because I don't know how long. No, he doesn't, Diamond. He does not. He do not. This It is a very important message. Exactly. This don't ever happen to me. Never. This never happens, right? It's very weird. Let's get to this word. I'm telling y'all, listen, <laughs> the enemy is steaming at me, okay? Um, he's steaming at me. All right. So we're going to get straight into it. So the dream, yeah, it's not my Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi is fine. I'm going to be honest. I, I checked my signal. It's not my Wi-Fi. All my connections are great. It's because I'm referring to the kids. All right, let's get to this word. Now, this is going to be in reference to what God revealed to me. All right. The enemy has some very dark plans concerning your children. I want you all to listen. Yes. Plead the blood of Jesus. We come against connectivity issues in Jesus name. Lord, please allow me to get this message out for these people. Um, and then I guess I'm gonna have to get off. I feel like kicking it with y'all, but I see TikTok got other plans. <laughs> TikTok got other plans. All right. So, um, I'm going to get straight into this word. Now, some of the things, so there's a lot of open doors. There's a lot of open doors as a result of this. All right. This is not always the case, but I want you all to understand there are many open doors. Now, I am no longer married. Okay. I am divorced. All right. I want you all to listen to what I'm about to say. However, I um my ex-husband is still he still has an addiction to pornography. OK, so one of the things that I still do is repent for the sins concerning my ex-husband. I still do. OK, I really do. And, you know, I go above and beyond because I'm very concerned about my daughters. OK. And so I just want to tell you all that. Now, for the people that are on here, I want you all to listen to what I'm saying. When you are married, the two become one flesh. You are in covenant with this man or this woman. So if you have a spouse that is addicted to, um, you know, sexual movies and all that kind of stuff, you really got to start repenting for your spouse. I want you all to understand that. If, you're, if your spouse, um, that is considered infidelity. I don't know if you all realize that, but if you have a spouse that is entertaining and watching pornography, you need to repent on behalf of them because you're introducing pornography, sexual spirits into your house. Because a lot of times this stuff is being done right in your home, right in your bedroom, all kind of stuff. When your spouse is addicted to pornography, it messes up your sex. The sex is not good because it's infidelity. There's unconfessed sins, okay? And it makes it difficult for you to connect with your spouse. So you must start repenting on behalf of your spouse. You, you got to stop saying your spouse is addicted to pornography and you not do nothing about it. You must repent on behalf of your spouse because the two become one flesh. So the enemy will actually use that against you. The enemy will use that against you, all right? I love you too. The enemy will actually use that against you. I want you all to understand that many of you don't fully understand how the spirit realm actually works and the spiritual laws. Okay. No, I would suggest, um, Amber, that you do not go to them with a bunch of foolishness, right? You go to God in prayer. You would do a lot better off not going back and forth with your spouse, but going to God. 
Arguing with your spouse and saying, why you study doing that? It's going to make it worse. Don't aggravate the situation because then the enemy is going to cause you all to fight. And then you won't be rocking in wisdom, right? You will be in foolishness. See what I'm saying? Because then you're going to get in your feelings. You're going to get upset. And then you're going to be up there telling him, well, I was watching this girl on live and she said this. Y'all be putting me in y'all business. Don't do that. Give it to God. <laughs> <laughs> give it to God. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Give it to give it to the man upstairs because he could do a much better job. He could do a much better job. Yeah, of course, wise guidance, definitely. Yeah, because all that arguing is just gonna make it worse. It's gonna make it ten times worse. All right. So I just wanted to tell you all that. Um, it's very important that you begin to repent on behalf of your spouse. I cannot stress that enough. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, Flora. Lashiva, what is that for life? You can be this wise. You need to quote Isaiah 11 and 2 every single day. You know wisdom is a spirit, right? It's a it's a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, might, counsel, right? This is something that I pray fervently every single day. You can have the same power and authority, sweetie. So it's yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm just a vessel being used by Christ, right? So you can operate in the same anointing in Jesus' name. Isaiah 11 and 2. Isaiah 11 and 2. All right? So, yeah. Um, so let's get to it. Now, these are some of the things that many of you need to repent for. Many of you need to repent for these things. Um, and I'm going to call this stuff out. So I'm going to use the term that the Holy Spirit gave me. It is called illegal sex. All right. Now, there is a such thing as illegal sex. I hope this don't go over your head. There's a such thing as illegal sex. And I know that many people love to say that the marriage bed is undefiled and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to tell you, many of you don't understand the biblical definition of what that meant and what defilement meant. But I'm not going to go into that today because I, I don't want y'all coming for me. But many of you have participated in illegal sex and illegal sex sex is when you allow somebody to enter the back of you. I'm trying to say it without getting too explicit. Okay. And I'm not talking about hitting it from the back. I'm talking about where, you know, okay, that's, that's, that's considered illegal to God. Many of you have participated in that very, that's not of God. That's not of God. I just want you to know that. Um, same sex relationships. Yes, the top hole, not the bottom. I like how you said that, Amber. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. So <laughs> it's not funny. I don't know why I'm so goofy. All right. So let me stop. Um, so same sex relationships. Same sex relationships. This is not pleasing to the father at all. Yeah, exactly. It's an exit. This is not pleasing to God at all. All right. I just want you to know that it is not pleasing to the father at all. Um, many of you are not praying for your kids fervently. And when I say fervently, you need to be covering your kids and praying over them every single day. Literally, you need to be praying over your kids every single day. And when I say this, I'm not talking about like no little small prayer. I'm not talking about like just saying, Lord, cover them. Lord, you know what I'm saying? Like nothing like that. I'm talking about really praying for them. I mean, coming against bullying spirits. Start binding bullying spirits. Start binding. You see that your kid is depressed, right? Or you feel like your kid is off. You start binding demonic tormenting spirits. You all need to start watching your kids. I'm hearing God say that you need to watch your kids kids patterns many of your children are being bullied at school many of your children are going through a lot of stuff in their sleep um a lot of night terrors a lot of your kids are being touched inappropriately by incubus and succubus a lot of these kids are already experiencing sleep paralysis a lot of these kids are being introduced to same sex um spirits while they're in their dreams this is about to get real deep I had a dream last night. The kids at my school were dying and it was like Halloween. Uh, Jasmine, you need to bind that demonic spirit. Uh, so the enemy is planning an attack at that school. And so what happened? Okay, so this is not good. 
this is not good. So I don't know if you just started coming across my ministry, but you need to watch the teaching that I did about praying over your kid's school. You need to decree that a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at a right, but it will not come near that school. You need to come against demonic forces. You need to employ your angels according to Psalms 91, 11 and 12. You need to ask God to expose to you deeper revelation concerning what the enemy plans is. And then you need to come against it fervently in prayer and fasting. All right. So I just want to tell you that. Yeah, that's God is getting your attention. He's warning you. That's why you having these dreams. <laughs> yeah, so you got you, you all have to understand that God speaks to us in all type of ways. And one of the ways he speaks to us is through our dreams. So you need to catch the revelation that I'm giving you. OK, you, you shouldn't be lazy about this. You need to get on top of this in Jesus name. You need to be quoting Psalms 91 over your child. Yeah, that's that was a bad dream. That's not a good dream. All right. So let me tell you all something. You all need to stop waiting on something to happen. You all get all these warnings. Many of you are very prophetic. You get all these dreams. You're not doing anything with this stuff. And then with all hell break, break loose, you begging people to pray for you. When God was like, I've been trying to get your attention for months. You all got to stop taking this stuff so lightly. You all got to stop disregarding your dreams. You all need to take these dreams so seriously. You need to go to God in prayer. You need to start fasting. You need to start partnering with the Holy Spirit every day concerning your kids. Start anointing your kids with oil. Start pleading the blood of Jesus over them. If you all have your gift of speaking in tongues, put your hands on the crown of these kids' head and start warning the Spirit for your children. This is how you win the war. You please stop taking this stuff lightly. A lot of you allow your kids to be on TikTok. A lot of you all are allowing your kids to be on social media and stuff like that all day long. And you should not be doing that. You should not be doing that. Many of you need to go through your kids' um, phones. God was telling me these things. So I want many of you parents that are on here right now. Because you know who I'm talking to. Because you're on here. You need to repent for watching these sexual movies. You need to repent for illegal sex. You need to repent for same-sex relationships. You need to repent for not being diligent as a parent. I want you all to start um, praying. I want you all to start repenting while we're on here. Letting your kids watch TikToks, cursing your children out. Let us, let's start repenting. Let us start repenting. I'm going to start praying for many of you. I want you all to repent on this live right now. Let's start repenting. I just plead the blood of Jesus over this uh, TikTok live right now. We come against every demonic attack against connectivity issues in Jesus name. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you convict the hearts of these people. Let's repent for being negligent. Let's repent for allowing our kids to be on iPads and phones all day and not talking to them. Many of you don't even talk to your kids and ask them how they feel, how they feel when they come home from school. Father, I'm asking that you convict the hearts of these people and that they will repent, Lord, in Jesus' name. We come against demonic attacks against these children um, concerning the parents that are on this TikTok live that are coming to you and repenting, Father God. We bind demonic attacks against these children in Jesus' name. We bind the spirit of perversion lust anger and poverty over these children in Jesus name father I loose the blood of Jesus Christ over the parents that are repenting on this TikTok live in Jesus name I speak a hedge of protection over these children I decree that these children will be covered by God while they are at school I decree that these angels will get assigned angels in Jesus name that the angel of hosts will encamp all around these children we come against the spirit that is causing other children to children to bully them in Jesus Jesus name we loose the blood of Jesus Christ I decree that these um, angels will subdue these spirits in the realm of the spirit 
in Jesus name aya sata umbo ya bakata umbo ye shaata umbre ya le kia basata ye le king de la ya e kapoya sata ye we come against every demonic attack against these children in Jesus name we come against the spirit of homosexuality and perversion in Jesus name we come against sex trafficking spirits we come against the spirit of whoredom as a result of them watching all of this listening to this demonic music many of your kids watch music some of you on here i'm hearing God say you let your kids dance to sexy red all of these all of these um hold on because you blaspheming the Holy Spirit you definitely got to get out of here um a lot of you all are allowing your kids you are allowing your kids to listen to the secular music you need to repent some of you have your kids dancing in front of you and you laugh who am I talking to on here because you're on here you are on here you are on here Lord, I'm asking that you convict the hearts of these people to stop, to, to convict their hearts so that they will come forth in Jesus' name. Stop letting your kids listen to all these secular mute, to all this secular music. Stop doing it. Stop thinking it's funny, allowing them to dance and stuff to this music, thinking that it's cute. It is not cute. It is not cute. This, the, the music from some of these women, do you notice that there is a shift in the way women act? Do you know women act very sexual now? They're very dominating now. And then the men are taking on a very feminine. It's like the men are stepping into their soft girl era and the women are acting like masculine men. That's not, that's not the gospel. That's not God. God is not behind none of this stuff. And so I want you all to stop letting your kids entertain this. Stop allowing your kids to listen to red. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I can't call her sexy red. I just refuse. I, I can't call her that. There's nothing sexy about anything that she is doing. And a lot of these girls are listening to her. They're listening to Ice Spice and stuff like that. This music is overly sexualized. Let's stop listening, allowing our kids to listen to this music. You all need to start asking your kids, how was your day? You all need to start asking your kids to give you their dreams and write these dreams down. And I want you all to do this and go before God in prayer. Go before God in prayer. A lot of you have kids on here with special needs. And I'm hearing this clear as day. Every person on here. Every person on here um, that has children. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Every person on here that has children with special needs, please understand that your child has a spirit of lust. This is something that partners with a lot of these kids. It actually causes these kids to be delayed. And I know it. nobody ever told you this, but there is a spirit of lust and perversion that are on ment a lot of these kids with mental disabilities. This is what you all need to start coming out. That's why you'll notice a lot of kids that are mentally challenged are very sexual in nature. You notice that? They like to touch themselves. They do a lot of weird things. Yet yeah, this is why this happens. Because it's a spirit of lust. Yeah, you noticed it because this, yeah. It's a spirit of lust and perversion that's on these kids. So you need to start binding the spirit of lust and perversion off of your kids. And then somebody going to say, I'm, I'm being deep today. So any other days, what was I? Surface level? Because don't nothing I teach is surface level. I ain't no gummy bear Christian. You all need to bind the spirit of lust and perversion off of your children. Especially if your kids have special needs. Especially. And I just want to tell you all that you better, you better abstract that wisdom. You better start decreeing Galatians 5 and 16 over these children. Decree Galatians 5 and 16 over your children. Decree Galatians 5 and 16 over your children. You need to say their name and say, this is their portion. I decree that they will walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh in Jesus name. I bind the spirit of lust and perversion off of my child in Jesus name. And then some of you all ask me, what type of prayers do I pray? If y'all been following my ministry, you see how I pray. You see how I bind spirits. You see how I quote the word of God and everything that I do. Why are you still asking questions instead of being an imitator of what I'm doing? 
You say, how are you, Genesis? I'm, I'm well. I'm well. <laughs> that was random. How are you, Genesis? I'm good. <laughs> why am I acting goofy right now? This ain't the time to be goofy. Okay. I just thought that was funny. I don't know why. Because it was like kind of random. But, um, wow. Somebody said, why do you seem so bitter? Y'all so, y'all so interesting to me. I don't even, I'm not even acting bitter at all. It's so strange to me how weird y'all are. Okay, so let me get to this. Let me get to what I need to say. And the reason being is because um, this is the second part of my message. I'm going to put this on YouTube. You said in your prayer line. I ain't got no prayer line. Or maybe, or maybe you just, or maybe I misinterpreted what you're saying. Um, you saying my prayer life. Oh, I think that's what you're trying to say. My prayer life is very powerful. Yes, thank you. Um, so let's talk about this really, really quick. The things that your kids have experienced. All right, I want to say this. The things that your kids have experienced. This is not this is not gonna be good what I'm about to say. However, I still have to say it. Um, that these are some of the things that God revealed to me concerning your children. All right. Some of the kids have already performed um oral sex already. A lot of the kids have already performed oral sex. A lot of the kids, a lot of your children have actually already participated in same-sex relationships, kissing, fondling the same sex as a result of you being negligent as a parent. Um, God revealed to me that some of them have participated in orgies at parties. Some of your children have. Um, some of the kids have been touched um, violently. I'm going to say that. Okay, and I don't want to use the word, but it starts with the a, a R. But some of your kids have been taken advantage of. Okay, so um, some of your kids, um, you said, say it, little sis, don't compromise. First of all, I ain't nothing about me little. That's number one. Number two, I don't compromise nothing that I say. And watch yourself when you speaking of me, because I'm not no little sis. You address me as Miss Genesis. Don't ever address me as no little sis. I'm not no kid. I'm a grown woman. I'm probably older than you. I just look young. All right? Watch yourself on here. All right? Now, nothing I do is compromising. Period. So, some of your kids have been touched and violently touched. All right? Some of the kids have prostituted themselves for money. Okay? As a result of this, a lot of kids have thought about starting OnlyFans and starting, I mean, well, God told me they want to get on these porn sites, but I know that OnlyFans is very popular, very, very popular, okay? And so, um, this is why I, I came on here today. This is why the enemy was fighting me for this live. Um, this is why the enemy was fighting me so difficultly um, on this live. Now... This is what the Holy Spirit told me. This is about to blow your mind. All of this started because your kid started masturbating. So this nasty, Mia, I have nothing to say to you. You are extremely dishonorable. I don't even know why you on this live. You truly need to repent before God. In Jesus name. All right. And that's all I'm going to say to you, sis, my good sis, Mia. All right. Now I'm going to get back to my message. All of this started as a result of your child masturbating. You don't understand how powerful and how potent a spirit of masturbation actually is. A spirit of masturbation can literally destroy your destiny. A spirit of masturbation can cause you to become paralyzed. A spirit of masturbation can cause you to be extremely sick. A spirit of masturbation can cause you to be mentally delayed and retarded. This spirit of masturbation is very, very evil. This is why um, the enemy wants your kids to start masturbating at seven. Seven, eight, nine, ten years old. This is why. This is why. I just talked about how to pray against it. I, that's all I've been talking about is how to pray against it. Were you? Why are you just now joining? <laughs> because I, I know I covered it already. I'm confused. Were you listening? I gave scriptures and everything. Yeah, because a lot of y'all focus way more on the comments than you do what I'm actually saying. I don't even know why y'all focus on the comments. All right, so all of this came about because your child was masturbating. Yeah. 
dishonorable towards me has nothing to do with you speaking ill of me. That's the last thing I'm talking about. That's the very last thing I'm talking about. Um, but a lot of you all, you a spirit of confusion come over you when I tell you you dishonorable and you act like you don't get it. But we're, we're, we're cool. Like, I'm just, I just, God told me to tell you that, that you're very dishonorable towards me. So that's, that's what I want to say to you. All right. You can pray about it and talk to God in Jesus name. But I want to get back to what's very important and that's delivering this message. So, um, all of this came about as a result. All of this came about as a result of masturbation. All right. So. Where do you go from here? Because a lot of your kids are under severe attack. And you are somewhere um, not paying your kids any attention. I'm going to post this on YouTube because this needs to be posted. I'm going to post this on YouTube. This was very difficult to listen to. Now, suppose I wouldn't have took that dream serious. Suppose I wouldn't have took that dream serious concerning what my son got. Suppose I just would have played it off and been like, you know what? I'll pray about it later. That's what 90, that's what 97% of y'all do. 97% of y'all, when you get all these warnings from God, you know what you do? You will hop on somebody live and tell them, oh, I had a horrible dream. You don't pray about it. You don't go to God about it. You don't meditate on scriptures. You don't read the Bible. You don't even try to fast. You will hop on somebody live and say, oh, I had a horrible dream. This, this, and this happened. The G sauce almighty. You need to stop watching pornography, sir. And you also need to give your life to Christ. All right. So um, I just want to say that you, all, that's what a lot of people do. You love telling people your dreams. Since I started the membership, what people will do is they will send me um, almost like um, it'll look like a, it'll look like an article in a newspaper. The dreams be so long. How is your memory this good that you could sit up and write all these details about a dream, but you struggle with reading three chapters out of the Bible? That makes no sense to me. You would take 20 minutes out of your day to hop on a membership where I'm literally like pouring my heart out to people. And then you think I'm going to read a 20, I'm going to read over 60 sentences. And you won't even read three chapters out the Bible. You're not even doing the homework assignments I'm giving. And then I'm, I'm expected to actually respond to that. Crazy. Instead of going to God for yourself. Instead of taking the tools that I provide and actually doing the same thing that I'm doing. It makes no sense. I serve the same God. Well, not all of y'all. But, but, but some of y'all. We serve the same God. Jesus Christ. You could go to him yourself. You all are having... It's horrible stuff happening to your children. And you're spending time worrying about the wrong stuff. Any person that's on here right now, you got a spouse, please understand you need to repent for your spouse every day. A lot of your spouses um, are not only cheating in you in the natural with other women, co-workers, because I'm hearing that clear as day. And a lot of y'all know it. You won't hear. You haven't even repented to God. You have to repent to God for infidelity. You have to repent to God for adultery. You're on here right now and your spouse has actually cheated on you numerous times and you're aware of it and you've done nothing about it. You know what you've done? You've gotten very bitter with your spouse and you know what you do? You get on the phone with your sisters. You get on the phone with your friends and you talk about your husband like a dog. You ain't even prayed about your marriage. You are aware and a lot of other people on here and you all need to learn what it is to go in a secret place. You know what your spouse is doing. You need to repent for adultery because unfortunately when your husband commits adultery, congratulations, so have you. I hate to tell you that. And many of you have spirit spouses. I'm hearing that clear as day. You, act, you and your spouse both got spirit spouses. Spirit spouses actually cause you to have horrible sex. Spirit spouses actually destroy your finances. Spirit spouses literally come between you and your spouse, which is why y'all always arguing, fighting, getting into it, hate each other. There was a girl in my membership. This girl had six spirit spouses that was cast out of her from a 20 minute prayer that I did. Six spirit spouses. 
And God gave her the names of the spirit spouses. Because these spirit spouses got names. Oh, it get deep in the membership, baby. It's get, it gets deep in there. Your spirit spouse got a name. He not just no spirit spouse. He has a name. Or she has a name. Some of you women on here who've been with the same sex, you have spirit wives. Because in the in the spirit realm, you can be having sex with a man and a woman. Just that's why you think uh why you think this was legalized. It's all a part of the devil's agenda. Yeah. Shucky B, you don't have to understand it because you don't understand. You don't read the Bible, right? You don't know who God is. So that's why you don't understand what I'm saying. And you're very, you're very offended by what I'm telling you. In the Bible, it says the two become one flesh. So you become one flesh. You are in covenant. Do you understand what covenant means? Do you understand what becoming one flesh means? This is why you and your relationship is not prospering. This is why it's so horrible. What I'm saying is very self-explanatory. Extremely. There's nothing to be confused about. Where the confusion is, is that you want somebody to feel sorry for you for a man that you chose. That's what it is. That's why you're confused. And blah, blah, Jehovah, who are you calling prideful? Are you referring to her who are you talking to? Because I'm not prideful at all. Some of y'all are comical. All right. Are we able to cast spirits out of our spouses? Not against your spouse's will. You shouldn't be walking up to your spouse. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit. You need to first sit down and talk to your spouse. Especially if you look warm. Especially if your husband is seeing you acting a donkey and then out of nowhere you turn around trying to cast a spirit, it ain't even gonna leave anyway. You have to have you have to actually be given authority to cast out spirits. I know that y'all y'all reference the Bible and you take a lot of things out of context. God is the one who gives us the authority. A lot of people don't have authority. Many of your pastors don't have authority. That's why the demons leave and more even come on you. I'm going to just remove you. Yeah, because I don't have time for that. I don't like people that play victim at all. Because we have free will. God gives us free will. We pick horrible spouses and then we want people to feel sorry for us. I don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> I don't. You chose that man. Now, I'm telling you to repent. And what is happening is, is that the person... Hold on. Let me remove that person that called me prideful because they never responded. You don't get to come in here... And the name is Jesus Christ. Talking about blah, blah, Jehovah. What a foolish name. Um. Alright. So yeah, we got to stop playing victim. We have to stop playing victim. You chose this spouse. You literally chose this spouse. It's not God's responsibility. You went outside of God's will and you married somebody because you wanted, you were horny. You were desperate. You wanted a roommate. Many of you are married to men where you all are splitting all the bills down the middle 50-50. You think that's of God and it's not. Oh, he in between jobs and he doing the best he can. And then he cheating on you. And a lot of you be getting beat. And then you still be in denial. And you think that's the man that God chose for you. Because that, that lying pastor told you that the devil hates marriages. And he don't. He don't hate your marriage. He laughing at you. Because you're falling right into his plan. Because you're not walking in your God or day purpose. The only way you become a threat to God is when you actually learn what it is to be a true servant of Jesus Christ. The only time you will be a threat to the kingdom of darkness is when you actually start bringing people out of darkness. The oh, That's the only time you become a threat. You are not a threat. You or your spouse is not a threat. You're not doing anything for God. Please trust me. The devil does not hate marriages. He loves that you are with the wrong spouse. You're with the spouse that he picked for you. Everything that the um, Jesus does, the devil mimics. Please understand that. Jesus does have a plan and a purpose for you. He really does, but so does the devil. So does the devil. All right.
Some people don't doesn't have a brain to even think this far. I don't think it has anything to do with them having a brain. You have to have the spirit of wisdom um, and you have to have the Holy Spirit. Um, and so that's what I'm going to tell you because I was I'm not this smart, but because I have the Holy Spirit, this is where this revelation comes from. Right. So. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm going to say about that. You have to pray concerning these things. Um, you have to you have to ask God for the gift of discerning the spirits. You have to pray fervently um, concerning this stuff. So, yeah, I just want to say that. All right. But many of you need to start repenting. All right. On behalf of your spouse. You don't have to listen to me. You do not have to listen to what I'm telling you. Please understand. You don't have to take my advice. You do. You know how weird it is to sit on a live with somebody that you don't like. And listen to them. You are monitoring spirit. Like it was a girl just commenting something. Now I've been on here for a minute. And and, and just people just comment the net. You will actually waste your time listening to somebody you don't agree with. That's crazy to me. I can block whoever I want to block. And I'm, I'm going to continue to do so gladly. Jesus told the disciples that if the people in the towns don't accept you, you wipe the dust off your feet and you keep it moving. And I'm going to block many of you demonic monitoring spirits in Jesus name. You don't ever get to tell me who I can and can't block. This revelation is coming from the Holy Spirit. It's borderline blasphemous to even come against a word that's coming from a true servant. People are being set free on a daily basis as a result of my ministry. I don't have to prove myself to nobody on here, on this app. But like I said, you all need to repent. Stop feeling sorry for yourself for the man or woman that you chose. All right. Stop, stop, stop doing it. So much revelation and a lot of conviction. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's real good. Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, I did a TikTok live. You know what I said on that live? I mean, I'm sorry. I did a TikTok video. I know I hit some nerves. I hit some nerves because let me tell you what happens. Anytime you marry somebody and things don't work out um, and then you get married to this person, this person is abusive to you. This person is cheating on you and all of these things. Let me tell you what happens. Let me tell you what, you, what happens. God gets out your way. He lets you do you. Because God gives us free will. See, this is where people get tripped up at. And then people start complaining and what they start doing is, is they start playing victim. And then they want God to save their relationship and their marriage. And they want him to be like this genie. Baby, God going to get out your way. Because I don't know why people have not connected the fact that you can actually marry a spouse sent from the devil. I don't know why people haven't connected that. I don't know why your brain hasn't like gone past the fact that if you're not actually a servant of Jesus Christ and you're not walking in your purpose, if you don't have the gift of discerning the spirit, how are you going to meet a, a spouse from God? Why would God bless you with an amazing man or woman when you are filled with demons? That person is not even going to want you or be attracted to you. You have to actually be free walking in purpose and be whole and be complete in Christ for him to send you your kingdom wife or uh, husband. That's how that works. I don't know why that's not connecting for many of you. This is why many of you go to churches and your pastors are Freemason. And you and you just sitting under him, listening to all this demonic doctrine, listen to him actually distort the word of God, listening to him minimize the Holy Spirit and maximize um, the things of God. This is why we got all this demonic doctrine. This is why you sitting in these pulpits and in these churches and they doing two hour musicals because that's what you're doing. And you're listening to these people sing to you and they're very lukewarm. They masturbate. They feel with us and they just singing over you you up there crying and screaming because you broken and stuff like that and you think this is a move of God and really you just emotionally bound and you broken they're not even teaching or preaching the word of God 
There is no exhaustion of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit should be orchestrating your ministry. And what is church etiquette? What is church etiquette? That sounds crazy to me because if I got a church, oh baby, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit, hey, how you want to do this big dog? Because this your world. I'm just here to be a servant and do what you tell me to do. Whatever you tell me to do, Holy Spirit, I'm going to do it gladly. We're not, we're not, we didn't took the Holy Spirit out the church. That's why ain't nobody getting delivered. This is why, hold on, let me get this person out of here. Yeah, it is a mic dropper. It is. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So I, I just want to say that um, one of the things the Holy Spirit revealed to me is that the, the very well-known pastors, any very well-known pastor that you know is a Freemason. Any well-known pastor that you know, any name that comes to your mind, you don't need to say it in the comment section. Don't say it in the comment section. They are Freemasons. That's what they are. They're Freemasons. That's why they're so big. Because Freemasons rule the world. They're part of the Illuminati. They're part of the plan. So that's why they're so popular. That's why they're so rich. Any popular, the ones that are very, very popular, the ones with mega churches, those are Freemasons. That's what they are. They're Freemasons. Lacey, you witch, get off my life. Talking about Jesus is bound. You sound, ooh, child. Yeah, they lean on the brotherhood. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what they're leaning on. Um, so I used to go to a church. This was years ago. And there was this pastor that everybody idolized. Everybody idolized this man. Um, he was once an apostle. He was once a prophet. He's not anymore. And hold on. Let me remove you just for even making that comment. Um, and so recently I came across a very disturbing video. This man had a big old powerful organization. Um, he had he had he had planted churches all over Louisiana, New York, Atlanta, all type of Canada. Everybody dipped. Everybody then dipped. He the last man standing. He almost died. And many of you probably know who I'm talking about. He almost died. He had like 13 seizures. Literally, all, he almost touched death. And God had mercy on him. One of the pastors two weeks ago made a very heartfelt post. And he said he is no longer serving in ministry after 13 years. Because some of the stuff that he experienced by being under this leader destroyed him, basically, is what he said. And it brought tears to my eyes. And... No, me <laughs> who I am I started praying and I started asking God about some of the things I said God what did he experience he said ritualistic and demonic abuse from who this head leader is which I won't say his name and he kept telling me he's a Freemason he's a Freemason and this is what um this is why he was so powerful okay but you know what's so funny God told me I have mercy on him he actually got mercy on this man because he could have killed him. He could have allowed him to die. He had 13 seizures, literally. And this man said that um, he experienced some horrible things. And he said he'll never do ministry again. Now, number one, let me just say this. This man who I'm referring to, you know what he did? This is the part that he forgot. I would love to talk to him. Oh, I would love to talk to him because I would love to tell him, you know what you did, big dog? <laughs> Let me tell you where you went wrong at. Number one, you were idolizing this man over God. That's why you're not doing ministry. Because if there's a calling on your life, shouldn't should nothing make you break you to the point where you don't want to do what God has called you to do? Nothing should break you if God called you. But what happens is we begin to idolize the pastor, the apostle, the prophet more than we do the things of God. So that's where all the problem come into play. And that's what happened to him. He idolized this man. He idolized this demonic man. This man that is so far away from God, it ain't even funny.
Don't ever put yourself in that in that situation. Don't ever idolize anything. That's what's wrong with many of you. This is why God allowed the very thing that you idolize to destroy you. This is why your marriages are so horrible. This is why your marriages are so horrible. You idolized a marriage and wanted to look good on social media more than you did God. And that's why that very thing is eating you alive. This is why you all have so much hatred when I speak about your marriages. You do. So that's all I want to say. There's so much doctrine that's being taught that's so off. It's so much. Um, but I am going to get off of here. I've been on here for a lengthy little bit of time. And I think that this message was very, very powerful. Um, you all really need to consider really interceding for your kids. You do. You need to really intercede for your kids. That's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell many of you, you need to consecrate yourself. You need to get off social media. You need to start binding all of these mat these spirits that are operating in your children. That's what I'm going to tell you. All right. Many of you get very offended at me correcting you. Many of you get very offended at the truth. And that's because ain't nobody ever told you anything. Um, you don't have to apologize to me, uh, Mia. All is well. I just wanted to reveal that to you in Jesus' name. I don't harbor unforgiveness or any of that. All right? You are very welcome. Um... You are very welcome. You all are very welcome for this word. I really hope that you all take today serious. I do. Um, the things that I read out concerning your kids are very alarming. Um, and so you all need to start fasting for your kids. I'm hearing God say that clear as day. Even if you just fast for eight hours for your children. Many of you need to start doing that. So a lot of what I told you is not even new. God even told me that. So when I told you that your daughter and your son like the same sex, you already know this stuff. A lot of everything that I was saying on there, a lot of y'all already know. That's why y'all was quiet and weren't saying anything. You know that majority of the stuff I talked about, you are already aware of, but you're doing nothing about it. And a lot of you talk really bad about your kids, which makes it 10 times worse. You need to stop putting your mouth on your own child. You need to stop talking so negatively about your own child. Stop sitting on the phone gossiping about your kids don't you know the people that you gossiping with your kids about don't you know when they hang up they talking about your kid they talking about you and your kids they they say literally that's what they doing don't ever trust the, don't ever trust the person um that sit up and listen to